Hey guys, it's Kathy. I just wanted to tell you all about a couple of resources that you may be interested in. First is the weekly newsletter called the FUMS Friday Night Six Pack. It goes out at 5 p.m. Eastern every Friday because it's 5 o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> it contains links to the top six happenings in the world of MS that week. Another great email list to sign up for, the Patients Getting Paid list. I'm working on an online course for those of us in the chronic community that either lost our jobs and need some flexible opportunities or that just want to supplement their existing income. Think being able to work from an infusion center or home or wherever and getting paid. If that sounds like something you might be interested in learning more about, sign up at fumsnow.com forward slash patients getting paid. And I'll let you know as soon as I launch that course. Thanks everybody. And FUMS. Welcome to the FUMS Now podcast show, where you'll gain information, inspiration, and motivation for living your best life with multiple sclerosis. Find us online at FUMSnow.com. I'm your host, Kathy Reagan Young. My guest today is Dr. Karen Heenberger, MD, PhD, and founder of LifeBulb, that's L-Y-F-E-B-U-L-B, a chronic disease-focused patient empowerment platform that connects patients, industry, and investors to support user-driven innovation and reduce the burden of chronic disease. Dr. Heenberger was herself diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at a very early age. She's dedicated her life to helping others impacted by chronic illness. Her personal history with diabetes, as well as its consequences, which, by the way, required kidney and pancreas transplants, provide her with an understanding from both a patient perspective and as a medical professional. It's from those experiences, both as a patient and a doctor, that she was motivated to create LifeBulb. She founded the company to connect people, inspire change, and impact lives. Their mission is to reduce the burden of chronic disease through the power of the patient. And she's here to tell us about a brilliant new partnership between LifeBulb and the pharmaceutical company Celgene to bring an innovation challenge to patient entrepreneurs. Those who've been affected by MS as either a patient, a loved one, or a support partner, whose companies are helping develop solutions to address an unmet need in multiple sclerosis. The goal of the Innovation Challenge is to shed light on the endeavors and ideas of patient entrepreneurs while raising awareness about this chronic condition. That's quite a lofty goal. Sounds like somebody we need to talk to. Let's go meet her. Hello, Karen. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited to be here and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Me too. Uh, before we dive into your company, LifeBulb, and your partnership with Celagene for this innovative challenge, would you please share a little bit about your story as a chronic disease patient and your decision to go into medicine yourself and why you subsequently started uh, LifeBulb, which, by the way, for the listeners, is LifeBulb, L-Y-F-E-B-U-L-B. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so I, I was always interested in science as a, as a young person, even as a child, but um, I was also very into sports. Uh, so most of my time, actually, when I was uh, young, I would be on the tennis court. I would be out uh, doing uh, different kinds of sports. But when I was 16, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and that truly changed my life. I, I uh, decided at that time that I wanted to um, uh, be in medicine. I wanted to work in medical research. Um, I wanted to find a cure for this disease that had affected me and really, really changed my my life. Um, so it motivated me even stronger to go into science. And that's what drove me to, um, to go to medical school immediately after high school. And I, I didn't really stop there because in medical school, I was always interested in the clinical problem, being diabetes, being MS, being a, any, any disease was fascinating to me. But I wanted to find the reason why the disease was present in certain people and not in others. So that drove me to uh, science, to research. So um, the medical school, the clinical presentation was fascinating, but what really got me excited was to find the solutions to or the reasons why people got sick or why people stayed healthy. Right. So um, that, that drove me to do a PhD. And um, uh, from then I um, worked very much in the industry and on the innovation side of medicine because I saw that I could do more 
um, benefit to people as someone who um, would be working not just directly with one patient as a doctor, but trying to find solutions to bigger issues such as whole diseases. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that's how I spent the next, I would say, 15 years after I did my postdoc in, in, in this country because I, I did my studies, my uh, medical school and my PhD in Sweden, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came here to continue to do research. Uh, but after my, my postdoc, I spent about 15 years um, in the uh, pharma, biotech industry, as well as on the investment side of, of, uh, of life sciences. Um, but after that time, I would say two things happened. First, my diabetes that had affected me at the age of 16 really um, got worse um, uh, over the, I would say, 10 years after moving to the U.S., so after having lived with type 1 diabetes for almost 20 years, my body was really beat. I was tired. And it was probably because of two things. One was that when I was diagnosed, uh, in contrast to what we are doing now with life bulb, mm -hmm. I had decided that I wouldn't tell anyone about my disease. Oh. So I was very secretive. I hid it from everyone really, in, except for my very close family. Mm -hmm. And that made it difficult to deal with the disease since the disease such, ty such as type one, such as MS, such as Crohn's disease, it's a disease that affects everything, everything in life, um, being what you eat, how you deal with people, how you do exercise, and everything you do in life also affects your disease. So if you decide not to share anything with anyone um, that you actually have the disease, then Per, that, that, per definition, makes you, um, you know, a very lonely person. Yes, and, yes. For me, and for me, even though I had a successful career and very competitive, um, I couldn't let people in fully. And that made it difficult to reach out for help because I couldn't reach out for help because no one knew that I had a problem. Right. Uh, so it meant that I, I was um, suffering very much uh, by myself and that that wasn't a good situation no. so that was number one uh, i think my my biggest mistake and what drove me to to um, get sick and number two was that although i was pursuing a cure and better treatments for people with diabetes and other autoimmune diseases mm -hmm. i never used my own experience as a patient when assessing new technology I never used my own experience when talking to scientists or doctors, mm -hmm. except for, of course, when it had to do with myself, mm -hmm. because I was so afraid of biasing my own uh, judgment um, off this end of one. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was also a mistake, because I think that the passion and the insights that a person who's living with the disease can contribute toward you know, better ways of dealing with the disease are really, really invaluable. So those two big mistakes that I made that I think affected me negatively um, are what really were the foundation of life bulb. Mm -hmm. So in 2014, when I had recovered from some of the complications of diabetes that I had, had gone through, eye complications, kidney complications, um, and now I'm, by the way, doing very well. So I'm, I'm in good shape. Um, but I'm very lucky, very fortunate to, to have uh, been given the second chance. Um, but in 2014, when I came together with two of my very good friends and colleagues, Steve Squinto and Ricardo Braglia, we said we need to address this gap uh, that is sitting, that is existing in the life sciences space right now. And that gap is industry and, and venture capital, um, companies and funds that are, you know, really uh, working in the space of innovation, but also in monetization of new technologies that are reaching the market are not listening enough to the patient. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bridge the gap between patient communities being organizations that are focusing on specific diseases, being and influencers and, and, and people like yourself, Kathy, you know, who are, are bringing forward um, insights and, and really speaking about disease at, at a very intimate level and, and bridging those organizations with the kind of big multinational organizations that are, are working and developing and marketing drugs and devices. 
So um, light bulb is sitting there in between. And two of the my big mistakes, my two biggest mistakes were really, again, the foundation of light bulb. One, we really believe in connecting people with one another. Mm-hmm. So we believe that patients need patients as much as they need doctors and scientists and nurses and so on. They need other patients to talk to, to share experiences with, to not feel alone. I don't want anyone to feel the way that I felt during those uh, years of hiding um, my disease. So that's number one. The connectivity is very important to life bulb. Number two is that we believe very strongly that the insights and the solutions that can be derived from people who are living with the disease Um, You know, those are the ones that we should be exploring and we should be forwarding to industry. So what we do through our innovation challenges and our partnerships with companies is that we source and screen for the best possible solutions that are coming from the patient community. So we are not just there to listen to the journey, which, by the way, very important, you know, the content coming out of blogs and and uh, webcasts and and stories that are live, you know, we do that. And we believe very strongly that data and insights from daily life, is, is th- that's very important. But we also have these innovation challenges where we bring solutions from people who are living with the disease to industry so that those solutions can become reality. Excellent. Love that. Um, so you started this company with the intention of, and I'm going to quote here, a, a chronic disease focused patient empowerment platform that connects patients, industry and investors to support user driven innovation and reduce the burden of chronic disease, as you just alluded to. I got that from your company website, by the way. Um, can you unpack that just a little bit for us? Like, what exactly does that mean? What does light bulb do? I, you mentioned, you know, bringing people together, but but. What does that do? What does that look like in terms of, um, you know, you said you're sort of in the middle between the patients and, and maybe the, the big companies, in the, the industry. So what does LifeBall seek to do? Well, our overall mission is to reduce the burden of disease um, for people living with chronic disease, chronic uh, conditions. So we have uh, we started our, our patient platform in diabetes where we um, uh, created a content. We built the community. We identified individuals who are our ambassadors. Uh, these are individuals who are articulate. They are um, located all over the world and um, they contribute to our online community. Um, these are the light bulb ambassadors. Mm-hmm. We um, build a community also through live events that we have now had uh, 33 events in the New York area. Um, these uh, events are, are I, I think, quite unique in the sense that we bring together different constituents, so patients, doctors, uh, companies, um, individuals who are interested, um, and, uh, and people who are interested in investing in the space. Uh, lawyers, bankers. So it's a real mix of um, of companies and, and patients and, and doctors and so on. So they're unique um, opportunities to connect. Mm-hmm. Uh, from diabetes, we moved into cancer because we feel that cancer is actually an interesting disease. Now it's becoming chronic. You know, with the better uh, treatments and the more targeted therapies, we are um, a, actually creating a chronicity of, of with cancer that we didn't have before. And that creates other problems so that the side effects of the drugs that are being used in cancer are now uh, also needed to be treat, uh, treated uh, for. So that means that we have a much bigger uh, market for new technology than, than merely treating the actual disease. Mm-hmm. From cancer, we moved into inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis, and created a community there as well, again, with ambassadors, with online and live events. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, and, and now, most recently, we uh, announced that we are uh, working in multiple sclerosis. So we have now created a community in multiple sclerosis. Excellent. So when we create these targeted communities... And it, it is, you know, for different reasons. One, of course, that, as I mentioned, Lifebulb wants to connect people with one another. That, per se, is a goal for us. We want to grow our community so it's large enough so that people can find one other person at least to connect with. Mm-hmm. That is our next big venture, is that we are putting together a, an app where you, as an individual, can connect with one other person who's been through what you're going through right now. If I had been able to connect with a person when I was 16 who may have been maybe 18, 19 and similar to me, then I think I would have 
dealt with my disease in a much better way than I did. I wouldn't have felt so alone and I would have seen someone else who's actually I could look up to and could, could be friends with. Yeah. So that's very important to life goals. Mm-hmm. Number two, uh, as I mentioned, is we don't we, we create our communities. It's also with the goal to find data and insights within that community. Mm-hmm. So when, what we have been doing is that we have been partnering with a, as I mentioned, we tried to bridge patient communities with industry. So we partner with a leading company in the space to help them source innovation through our community. So in diabetes, we partnered with Nova Nordisk, which is a leading company in diabetes, and we help them find technologies uh, for two years in a row with an innovation challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, we just announced that we partnered with Celgene, and our innovation challenge in multiple sclerosis opened last week. That means that anyone who is a patient or a relative to a patient, someone who's been inspired to address a need that they have observed in in their personal life, um, and that, that has come up with a product and started a company. And that company is at a startup stage where they want more exposure, they want more awareness, they want a network, and they need to raise money. Then they should apply to this challenge because yeah. this challenge will give an opportunity to meet with Celgene, of course, which is a leading company in the biotechnology space, and it's just now entering MS. And meet with Lifebulb um, uh, friends and family, which is, uh, consists of a very strong advisory board and board where we have access to investors as well as those who can help companies grow. Um, and, and, and then we will also have uh, a, 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 an opportunity for these companies to get exposure. Mm-hmm. So the way it works is if you go to our website, lifebulb.com, and you go to innovation challenges and you, uh, you, you look at the MS one with Celgene, you will see that you can apply directly through the website. The process takes about 30 minutes, I would say, where you have to uh, put together a summary of your business and the motivation for why you started your business. And with that kind of uh, application, we will then select the top 10 finalists who will go to an innovation summit in uh, New Jersey. And I think that will be a tremendous opportunity for anyone who's working on innovative uh, solutions in multiple sclerosis. Yes. And this is the first one you're doing in MS, correct? Yes, correct. But you've got uh, quite the track record in some other uh, areas. Can you give us an example of a past challenge and what type of innovations came out of those? Absolutely. I can uh, give you a few. So as I mentioned, we've done two in diabetes. Um, and um, I'll give you an example of a technology that came out of that that was sold within nine months of the challenge. Wow. It was a young man from Sweden who was um, a uh, type 1 diabetic since he was very young. And he developed a cap for the insulin pens that would fit all insulin pens across companies that registers when and how much insulin was dosed. And that can, seems very simple, but no company had done that. And it really helps the patient because when you live an active life and as a person with diabetes, you make about 200 extra decisions every day, you sometimes can't keep track of um, uh, when and how much you dose. And that can be very dangerous if you over or underdose insulin. Mm-hmm. So that's one example. And the example of inflammatory bowel disease, which was an innovation summit that we did last year together with United Health Group. Uh, took place in Minnetonka in July, uh, and there we had 10 wonderful competitors, and uh, one of them uh, was a, another man, actually, but from New York, who had Crohn's disease, and when he was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, he realized that the roughage in salad and raw veggies, you know, he wouldn't be able to sustain ever again, probably, um, and he missed those nutrients, and he, he thought, I I really, I really want to have a food that I can bring with me, always be available, and is safe so that I don't have the symptoms of Crohn's disease, which can be terrible. Yeah. Uh, and he created a freeze-dried powder of perfectly organic, um, nutritious veggies that you just mix with water, and he created a shake that is very, very uh, popular and is now a kind of staple for people living with Crohn's and colitis. And by the way, it's delicious and it's very, very good for anyone. So uh, that's one of the, uh, another technology that we, we identified through our challenges. I'll give you a third. 
it was a woman um, uh, in, whose parents, both parents died of cancer. This was in our cancer challenge. And she and her brother decided that they did not want uh, to see, have any other children um, having to see their parents not just die of cancer, but die in such a horrible way because the treatments that their parents had to sustain were so broad that they died really of the side effects of cancer. So her brother and her both went to um, study science, and she also studied business. They put together a company, and now their company is focused on targeting therapies uh, through RNA technology and makes it much less, um, makes, makes the drugs that are in existence have less side effects because they're more targeted. Wow. So that's another technology that came out of one of our challenges. And I can go on and on. We actually have 200 examples on our website oh of, of these individuals. I can't wait till you have 200 examples for MS. <laughs> I, I know, just, I know. I, I love the sound of this. I really do. I mean, yeah. who knows uh, MS or any disease state um, and all the challenges that come with it better than those most affected by it. So I think this is fantastic. Let me also tell everyone that the winner of the challenge will receive a $25,000 monetary grant to expand their company's efforts in the marketplace. And as you said, a whole lot of help along the way. I just, this is fantastic. Really amazing stuff. Um, so Karin, if you would please share with us, um, what are the deadlines for getting in on this? And I, and, and one more time, if you would tell everybody where to go to um, learn more and to sign up. Yeah. So you should go to our website, lightbulb.com. And the challenge is open right now. Um, it, you just have to go onto the website and it says it's a sub bullet called innovation challenge. You go to the one where it says cell gene 2019. And it says here, addressing unmet needs in MS, the challenge will take place June 12th to 13th at the Celgene headquarters in Summit, New Jersey. The applications are open through Friday, April 12th at midnight. <laughs> and please apply now. Actually, it's interesting. I'll just give you an anecdote because we just closed our cancer challenge um, last week. Mm -hmm. And the hour before we closed, we had 10 applications come in. Wow. So, you know, if That's you want to save it, <laughs> if you want to save your application for the last minute, you can. But yeah. I would try to get them in earlier. <laughs> yeah. What if there was some kind of glitch on the Internet? I don't know. That would make me very nervous. Get them in there now, peeps. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just love this. I mean, I'm a huge fan of going to the source and trusting that those who are in the middle of a problem are best suited to find a way out. I really love this challenge. And a quick reminder to everyone that all of the links for today's show and all episodes will be in the show notes. Just go to fumsnow.com forward slash podcast, find the episode, and I'll have taken all the notes for you. So all of these links and whatnot will be there. Well, thank you very much for being here with me today and sharing all this wonderful information with the FUMS community. I just, uh, I appreciate your time and, and your vision and your commitment to the chronic conditions community. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much. And I'm um, looking forward to see many applications uh, come in. And, uh, and of course, the goal is to help those living with MS. We want to obviously get rid of the disease completely. But while we're working on a cure, we want to find treatments that can help people live better with the disease. Yes. Amen to that. Thanks again. Really appreciate being here. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to the FUMS podcast show. Be sure to subscribe to it so you won't miss an episode. You can do that right on the website at fumsnow.com. While you're there, sign up for the free email list so you'll be among the first to know of any new findings in MS research, new therapies and products, as well as any blog posts and podcast episodes I release. Want to chat with others in the FUMS community? Join us on Facebook at FUMS Now. Thanks again, and don't forget to talk to the stupid disease as it deserves. Tell it FUMS every day.